To get started, you're going to need Node.js and npm. You can get both of them from nodejs.org. Go to downloads and choose what operating system you're going to work from. Next, you'll need to get the one-liner, which is available on the Next.js page on Zesty.io or at our GitHub repository. Both links are in the description. Then copy that line of code. Open up your terminal. Confirm you have the right version of Node running by typing node-v and npm, npm-v. Now paste that line of code into your terminal and hit enter. Say yes. Now name your app. You can name it anything you want. This will be what the folder is named and what it's named inside of Zesty. Use dashes so it's folder name friendly. Now wait for npm to install the packages needed to run this project. This should take about one minute. If you have a slower computer, it could take three to four minutes. Once npm is finished installing, you'll get a prompt from Zesty asking you if you want to create a new instance. Yes. It'll create a new folder. This folder is named after the app name that you wrote above. Now it'll ask for your email. If you are a Zesty user, put in your Zesty email that you registered an account with. If you aren't a Zesty user, you can enter in your email and create an account on the fly. And then you can enter a password. Again, if you're not a user, enter the password you want to create an account with. It recognizes that I'm a new user. I can create an account here or I can try to reattempt my password if I am a user. I'm going to create an account and hit yes. Enter your first name and last name and an account will be created. After it's done, Authenticating with Zesty, it'll ask you to create a new instance. Hit yes. A new instance will be created. Once the instance is created, it'll authenticate with Zesty and create your project. And you'll notice that in the load steps, it'll create a Zesty config. It'll fetch your instance settings. It'll generate a Zesty config to work with Next.js. It'll make components lined up to your new instance. Update your git ignore and clean it up. From here, it'll ask you to start the app. What we want to do is change directory into your new starting app folder. You can take ls to see all the files. We're using an IDE called VS Code. You can type code dot to open up your code. You'll see my project here. Enter npm run dev to start your project. From here, you're going to navigate to localhost with the port 3000. If you see bootstrap template ready, that means you've connected to the Zesty instance and you're ready to go. Before we start editing code, go to Zesty.io and log in with your new created user. When you're logged into Zesty, you'll see a new content instance in Zesty named after the same name you entered into the command line. When you see it, click Edit Content. This will launch the manager. From here, you'll see it starts with very minimal information. It's a home page and clippings. Clippings are global settings. Let's click into the home page. From the home page, you'll see a title here. Let's change that name now and then hit the Save button. You can also hit Command S. Now that the remote information is changed, refresh your local host to see that change happen. Now you've confirmed Zesty is connected to your next app. From here, let's go edit the code that's loading this template. When Zesty installs, it creates a folder called Views, and inside of that, a folder called Zesty. In here, you have a view that lines up to each content model created in Zesty. We started with three content models, Clippings, Homepage, and Widget. We're going to open Homepage. You'll see here that there's an H1 that's outputting content.title. That's this. Let's change that to an H2 and see it change. Note with Next.js, when you save a file over here, it'll hot reload. But if you're going to change content remotely, you'll need to reload the page manually. From here, you can work right in JSX, and this is React. So I just added a horizontal rule below my H2. Now we're going to expand what we have to work with in our Zesty instance by adding an articles schema. Open up Zesty. Click in this schema. We're going to create a model, 
and this will be a public web page. It's going to have multiple entries, and we're going to call this model articles. It'll create a reference name. This reference name will be used to create a component file, and this model will have no parent. Create. Models don't start with any fields. We want to start by adding a field. We're going to add a field called title. We're going to add another field called, which is a WYSIWYG, and we'll call this body. And we'll add another field called, which is media, and we'll call it header image. Now we have three fields for our model. If we go back to content, we'll now see an area for articles. Click that area. And let's add a default article. Let's add an image. Looks good. Select it. Load. Create this article. Great. We've created our first article. Let's go back to the code. In order to synchronize the new content model we made of our next app, we need to open up the command line and we can type npm run sync. That'll automatically synchronize with your Zesty instance and create a component. And since we called our new schema articles, it creates a component called article. In here, you'll see in this new component, there's a comment that conveniently gives you links here to go edit it in the manager. You can copy that and paste it here. And this will open up the schema so you can see where you had schema. It also will show you what the schema was when this was created, so you can see you have access to title, body, and header images. It also starts you off with just an H1 and a div that's loading some meta information. Let's go back to Zesty and let's look at our item and articles and grab the article URL. And this one's called My First Article. What you're seeing here is Zesty Web Engine. If you're working headlessly, you may not use this, but it'll automatically output the data that you rendered. How we get the URL is two ways. We can click on SEO meta and we can see the URL path part. We can also see it here in this Google example. Or when you're under edit content, you can click preview. And when I click preview, I'm going to take the URL. I'm going to go back to my local host, paste the URL. I need to restart my project npm run dev to restart next. Now my local host is automatically going to resolve that article. I now have access to body here, so I can rechange this to body. So when Zesty runs the component, it loads all the content available into the component with an object named content. You can access content based upon the field names of your schema. So if we go back to Zesty, we can click Edit Schema, and we can see the field names, title, body, and down here is header image. Let's look at how to load an image. So we have an image named header image. And you can see in the comment block, it shows an example right here. So images are accessed in an array because images can have many images. In this particular instance, we only have one in image. So this is how we access it. Let's copy this example, paste it here, and replace the reference that the example had, image name, with ours. Finish our code bracket, take a look at our instance, and now we're loading our image. Zesty has access to modify images. We call it OTF for on-the-fly imaging. You can look it up by searching OTF image Zesty, and you can look at the API for how you modify images on the fly. Start by wrapping everything in a string literal, and then at the end, you're going to add a query parameter. And if we look at the docs, you can see the first one would say, you could say width, and we can make this 20, or let's make it 50. And that's automatically going to resize the image relative to 50 pixels wide. See, it's nice and small now. This automatically translates to WebP and optimizes itself. So join our Discord if you have questions, and we'll see you there.